Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to my Swift series. In this video, we're going to be learning about conditional statements in Swift. Now, let's go ahead and say hypothetically that it was raining today. And I'm not sure if it's raining, but I want to have a scenario where it is and where it's not. If it's raining, I'm going to take my umbrella. Otherwise, if it's not raining, I'm going to go ahead and wear shorts. So let's go ahead and create a conditional statement around this. If something is true, do X, Y, Z. Otherwise, if that condition we tested is false, do ABC. So let's say, let's create a variable. Let's call it var is rainy and set this equal to false for now. So if is rainy is equal to true, okay? And one thing you're gonna notice right, right off the bat, I'll explain it in just a second. If is rainy is equal to true, print out, um, take an umbrella. And otherwise, else, Let's go ahead and just say print wear shorts and let's see what we get. Um, let's take a few seconds for this code to run and we get an error over here. So one of the big things you want to know is that when you're comparing two objects together, two values, whether it's two variables to um, a true and a false statement, doesn't matter what it is, you always want to compare with double equal sign. So the single equal sign that we used up top that is used to associate a value. The bar is rainy has the value false because we're saying that, hey, this value is being associated with this variable. The double equal to sign refers to compare. Is rainy compared to true? If it's true, then do X, otherwise wear shorts, and we get wear shorts over here. Fantastic. So that's the gist of an if else statement. We have if some condition, if this condition is true, print out something or perform some action, otherwise, print something else out. And this operator we used here is called a relational operator. Now in Swift, there's six distinct relational operators. There's greater than, there's less than, there's greater than or equal to, there's less than or equal to, there's equal to equal to or compare to and not equal to. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly show you all six of these. Let's go ahead and start off with greater to. So five greater than three. That again, gives us a true or false. And one thing you guys have to know about relational operators is that every single one of them will give you a Boolean result. It has to be true or false. That is your condition. So five greater than three, is it true or false? Swift tells us it's true, that's obviously right. Three less than five, that is obviously true. So it's gonna give us true. The next one is five greater than or equal to three. That is basically saying that, hey, if five is, if this value is greater than three or if this value is equal to five, that way it's gonna return true. And then we have less than or equal to. So four less than or equal to three is obviously gonna return false. Then we have compare to. So compare to again is double equal to science and you're comparing two values together. So five double equal to five gives us true because the two values are the same. And then not equal to, when you wanna say, see if something is not equal to another value. So five not equal to four is true because five and four are two distinct values. Again, remember, every single relational operator, every single condition, gives us a Boolean value, true or false, and then we use these conditions in our if and else statements. So now going back to our conditions over here, I can say something like, if five is greater than three, take an umbrella, otherwise wear shorts. Or I can say something like five not equal to three, print take an umbrella, otherwise print wear shorts. You just have to ensure that your condition and your if statement always gives you a true or false. Fantastic. But now let's go ahead and discuss what happens when we have multiple if conditions, multiple statements we want to test. Um, let's create a variable age, var age is equal to 16. And now I want to say if age is 14 do something, if age is 15 do something, if age is 16 do something. And the way we do that is using else if. So if age is equal to 15, again, note the curly braces. In Python and other languages, it was colon. In Swift, you have to put curly braces after the if statement. If age is equal to 15, I'm gonna go ahead and say print out uh, your 15, okay? Else, now I wanna test that my age is 16. That's where else if comes in. Else if age is equal to 16, print you are 16, okay? Else, if you're not 15, if you're not 16, then print hi there, okay? So that is a scenario of where we're using else if and now we're see over here, you are 16. Why? Because the code runs, 
16 is not equal to 15, goes to the next condition, 16 is equal to 16, this is true, and we get print you are 16, okay? So that again is if and else statements in a nutshell. Very simple, very, very straightforward. The last thing I wanna talk about with conditional statements is combining two conditions together. Let's say I have my if statement, right? If h is equal to 15, which in this case we know it's not, but I wanna test another condition simultaneously. If h is equal to 15 and age is less than 17, okay, two conditions now, I wanna perform print you are amazing, okay? So note this condition right here, this logical operator, that's what we call it, that denotes and. The two ampersand signs, again on your keyboard, that's gonna be shift and, what is it, shift seven. So if you do shift seven twice, you get these two ampersand signs, and in Python, we just type and, right? Very straightforward, very easy to read. But with Swift, we have to type shift seven double twice, and we get this ampersand sign. And what this denotes is, if this condition is true, okay, and if this condition is true, then it returns a specific value or whatever our code is supposed to return. And it makes sure that both of our conditions are true, which in this case is not. However, if I make my age 15 and I run this code, I'm gonna go ahead and see that 15 is equal to 15 and 15 is less than 17. Since both of these conditions are true, we get you are amazing. However, with and also comes or. Or is denoted by two slashes. Again, on your keyboard, it's one of the rightmost keys. Just shift the uh, shift forward slash, and that's your straight lines. Or basically says that, hey, if this condition is true, or if this condition is true, I don't care which one is true, I just need that one of those conditions has to be true, then go ahead and execute the code. So again, just to recap this lecture, guys, we covered conditional statements. If, else, if, else. You have a condition, we learned the relational operators, greater than, less than, greater than equal to, less than or equal to, compared to and not equal to, all six of those return true or false. If your condition is true, it'll execute that code. Otherwise, it will go to the next condition over here. Otherwise, it will have a backup case. Your else is always the backup case. If all of this fails, it'll hit the else. And last but not least, we covered logical operators. And an or, okay? And is denoted by double ampersand sign and or is denoted by two forward slashes. For and to work, both conditions, condition one and condition two, have to be true. If one of them is false or if both of them are false, your code or your overall condition will not be true. With or, however, you just need one condition to be true. If this is true, or if this is true, or if both are true, doesn't matter what case it is, then the entire condition over here will be true. Now, one last thing before I end, guys. Most people, most Swift programmers, what they'll do is they'll place parentheses around your condition. That's common practice, again, for simplicity and just faster typing, I didn't do that. But most of the time, guys, when you're creating these if and else statements, make sure that you have some sort of brackets around your conditions just to denote that, hey, this is my condition. This entire thing has to either be true or false. It just looks better. Anyways, thanks so much for listening, guys. Hopefully all of this was clear. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.